Well, hello, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Rachel, and I'm in my kitchen, and I'm gonna make some chocolate chip cookies this morning because did you know that chocolate chip cookies are a really good way to learn about what the real meaning of Easter is? So join me as I make some cookies this morning. Well, I'm ready to start making these chocolate chip cookies. Come along for the ride. I'm not really a baker, so enjoy it with me. So the first ingredient that we need is flour. And when God created the first man and the first woman, they were without sin. They were perfect. They lived in the Garden of Eden, and they talked with God every day, and they had a perfect relationship because there was no sin in the world. But the Lord warned Adam and Eve and said, you can eat of any fruit in this garden except for one. And that fruit was the knowledge of good and evil. And if you have it, you will surely die. And so this is our first ingredient, which is flour, just like the pureness of the first man and woman. The second ingredient is salt. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve did eat from the tree in the garden that God told them not to. And so, just like salt, it looks like sugar on the outside. And that's kind of like sin. Sin can sometimes look good, but then once you taste it, and once you experience it, it's not good. So this salt is like sin. Looks good, but it doesn't taste like sugar. Once you actually have it, you know that it's not right. In Romans 3, verse 23, it says, for everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Put that in there. Butter is our next ingredient. The butter is going to stand for Jesus because who doesn't love butter? Here we go. We kind of ate some for our toast. I'm hoping it's still going to be fine. Let's throw that in there. We might need a little extra. Yeah, who doesn't love butter? Who doesn't love Jesus? Okay, so the butter's gonna stand for Jesus. Jesus came to the earth while everyone was still sinners and he was perfect. And he came to be an offering for our sin. So in 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the perfect offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Jesus Christ. The fourth ingredient is the eggs. Eggs stand for life because this is how a chicken is, comes into the world, or a bird. Because Jesus was without, was without sin, he gave his life to save all of us. So just like these eggs, he did not die for his sins, he died for all of our sins. In Isaiah 53 verse 4, it says, Yet it was our weaknesses he carried, it was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. Just make sure there's no shell.
The next ingredient is the vanilla. Have you smelled vanilla? Oh, it's good. It smells so lovely. Well, Jesus came and he gave his life for us. And the vanilla is kind of like the spices and the um, aromas that they would have embalmed the body. So after Jesus died and was buried, he was put in a tomb. And this vanilla reminds us of, of the, the sweet smelling fragrances that they would have put on the body after it died to preserve the body before burial. So I'm just gonna put this in here. In John chapter 19, verse 38 to 40, this is what it says. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave him permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish custom burial, they wrapped Jesus' body with spices in a long sheet of linen cloth. Do you think that was the end of the story? Jesus did die, right? Well, the next ingredient is baking soda. And so the baking soda helps our cookies rise. And just like baking soda and helping our cookies to rise, Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave and he rose from death. So he conquered death. So I'm gonna put it here. Mm -hmm. I think you put dry and dry. That's the wet, this is the dry. Wish me luck. Okay. So the verse that goes along with that is in Romans 4, verse 25. He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So then we have the brown sugar. The darkness of this brown sugar is kind of like the darkness in our hearts when we have sin in our lives. And in John 3.19, it says, the and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. So when we sin, we live in darkness. I would much rather live in the light. I'm going to put this dark brown sugar into this one. The next ingredient is white sugar. Because when we ask Jesus to come into our lives and to take away our sins, we can become like this white sugar, pure and clean from all our sins. In Isaiah 1 verse 18, it says, Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. So this white sugar represents what Jesus does. He makes our sins washed white. I'm going to put that in here too. All right, now I have to do a little bit of mixing. I'm going to need. So now I've had all the ingredients put in here. Ooh, and it's really coming together. These cookies are gonna be good. Okay, the last ingredient is the yummiest ingredient of all, and that's the chocolate chips. You can't have chocolate chip cookies without the chocolate chips. So these chocolate chips stand for the sweetest part of the story. It says that when we put our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ and we accept him into our lives so that he would rid our lives of sin, that we have the opportunity to live forever with him in heaven. And so in 1 Thessalonians 
417, it says, Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So I'm going to put these in. Oh, they look good. Let me do some more mixing. Okay, these are almost ready to go in the oven. Wanna see? Yeah, I know. It kind of looks like a mess, doesn't it? But you know what? That's what our lives look like before we ask Jesus into them. When we have Jesus in our lives, it gives us the opportunity to take our messiness and to clean it up. Jesus takes on all our sin, and that's what he did at Easter. He took on all the things that we do bad things we do, the things that hurt God's heart and separate us from him. He took all of that and he died on the cross and he stayed in the tomb for three days and then he rose again. I'm going to bake these cookies, but you know what? If this is the first time that you've ever heard that story or if this is the first time that you've ever realized the truth of what Jesus can do in your life, I would love to pray for you and I would love to help invite Christ into your heart. You know what? It's really simple. You don't have to be at church with us. You can pray it right now at your home, with your family, or by yourself, wherever you're watching this. So we'll just say a simple prayer. And that is a prayer that shows that you believe in Jesus and you want him to be king of your life. So let's just pray really quick. And this is what we call salvation because Jesus comes to save us from our sins. So Lord, we just ask that you would come and you would clean up the messiness in our life. We believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and that he died and rose again for us so that we can live forever with you in heaven for eternity. We thank you for that sacrifice and we give our lives to you and we invite you into our heart today. In the name of Jesus, amen. So if that's the first time you've prayed this prayer, please get in touch with us. We want to journey with you on this exciting track called Being a Christian. I'm going to make these cookies and let's see what the result is at the very end. Thanks for joining me this morning. All right, well, thanks for joining us for Easter Sunday morning. I hope your family has enjoyed this morning. Our cookies are ready, but I'm not going to eat all of them right now. But I hope you've had a great day. Remember to follow us on Facebook, to subscribe to us on YouTube, and to check out our website so that you can stay in touch with our church family throughout the week. God bless everyone.